People say that you're not supposed to read the comments on your YouTube videos, or some people do, because it'll bum you out, or oh, someone's going to say something mean. But there was one comment that I wanted to highlight, because it really got my brain turning. Someone was talking about this ship here, the Corsair. They were talking about an E-War variant of the Corsair, and immediately, as soon as I heard that, I was just like, yes, absolutely, 100%. I would totally agree with that one. So you can get a twofer when you build the ship, you can build both as they're now adding, what is it? The A2 and the M2 versions of the Hercules coming, I think just slightly after the C2, which is the civilian variant. I know some people were saying that, oh no, they're gonna make it into uh, 313 and um, maybe like 313.5 or something like that. I don't. I don't think they're gonna quite squeeze in for 313, let's uh, be honest. And oh, by the way, you might be noticing some weird flying in the background. This is because I was in the midst of a, a heated guild debate while I was trying to grab background footage in Star Citizen. <laughs> but um, yeah, so the Corsair and E-War variant, I think that this is a brilliant idea and it goes, it could fulfill the promise of an earlier ship or an earlier version of a ship, which sadly did not survive. Some of you are going to know what I'm talking about. Some of you don't know that this ever existed and I'm sorry, but after this video, you will never be able to unknow it. This is the original version of the Herald. This is the Herald that was sold for like, I think the first week of the sale before Chris Roberts saw some other, you know, art and then kind of they pulled back on this. But when the Herald was originally being sold, this was what we saw. This was the original version of the Herald. And it, it produced a lot of heated debate within the community at the time though it was rather comical um in the beginning a lot of people were saying oh no it's 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 imbalanced it'll never fly in atmosphere and it's like okay so then maybe we should redo the the, the design of the scythe you know maybe we should actually make it balanced one wing on each side oh no 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 i don't want you to change that but it's just that ship no 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 that's that's imbalanced and so we ended up with the symmetrical herald though obviously there was a large contingent within the community who wanted the asymmetrical Herald, myself included. Now, when we remember these debates way back in the day and all these people who were shooting this thing down, it's kind of funny to see how the community's attitude changed with the arrival of the Corsair. Now, asymmetry discussion aside, um, you can see how you could bring some of those elements together. If you take the, the sort of the if you think of this as almost like a different version of a Y wing, you know, because it actually makes, you know, a Y. Um, if you take the two wings off of the left hand side of the ship, if you're facing forward and you replace that with an enclosed kind of transmitter slash radar slash maybe signal dampener or whatnot, you can see how this could actually, you could kind of get a two for here and you could build the Herald's bigger brother. And I would be very, very interested. The fact that it also continues on with the Drake pedigree, you know, it, it kind of carries forward that Herald role into a bigger ship. When I read that comment, this was immediately where my mind went. I was just like, oh my God, that's just such a perfect marriage of manufacturer purpose, their experience already building the Herald and kind of offering the potential to revisit that original Herald to a certain degree on a much larger scale and maybe fulfill the promise of the original ship. That is very interesting to me. You know, one of the great mysteries um, when you're talking about, uh, you know, star citizen, future careers, future professions, future game mechanics is to, you know, exactly what kind of shape E-War is going to take. Is it just going to be signal dampeners? Is it going to be full on like being able to jam other people's locks? Is there going to be a lot of inter um, interesting kind of gameplay loops and things that you can do? Is it going to be somewhat like e you know, ECM and ECCM in EVE Online? Or is it going to be a kind of a different, different sort of animal altogether? It's 
a lot of it is kind of up in the air. And I feel that a ship like that would obviously generate, in my mind, because I'm speaking from my own perspective here, in my mind, that would generate a lot of enthusiasm. But I'm thinking with the minion soldier brain, clearly. When you look at the interior of the Corsair, you can easily see how that exploration area just to the rear of where the beds are for the crew and the lunch area, you can see how that could easily be reconfigured to account for, you know, maybe a few crew stations to sit down and run electronic countermeasure equipment. You could take away the two turrets at the side and you could add unfolding like signal dishes or however you really want to call them to allow it to blanket ECM in multiple directions if that's the mechanic that CIG is going for. There's a lot of possibilities with this design. I mean, just, you know, don't mess up the little room on the side with the weapon and the armor storage. Let's let's keep that intact. That's kind of, kind of, that's really going to come in handy in the future. And some ships are sorely without that sort of uh, thing. But then again, you know, this is a civilian ship. So, of course, it has storage for, you know, weapons and armor. Whereas a military ship, you, you wouldn't want that. I 100% I, I agree with that. Uh, <laughs> um... I think that yeah this would this is an awesome idea and an amazing idea I think that it's great and you know Drake really has come a long way in the early days of Star Citizen Drake was very much thought of in, in a way the same way CIG used to write them up in a lot of the other ship brochures you know they would talk about in a brochure where they're talking about the Vanguard or they're talking about, you know, this fighter or that military ship. And they would say, all oh, these designers submitted designs, but Anvil won out and Drake was rejected out of hand or something like that. I know that that was written in one of the early brochures. And I think a lot of people in the community, when we saw these very first kind of iterations or these very early days tries, I don't even think when this version of the Cutlass came out, I don't even think we had the hangar module yet. I think this goes all the way back to 2013. Um, when this is all that we saw of Drake, I think a lot of people kind of wrote them off. But in the interim years, um, I think that Drake has really kind of built a solid reputation within the player community. Going so far as making the Cutlass, I think the third most popular. I don't think CIG has ever given the exact numbers, but I think it was Disco Lando who at one point said that the Drake Cutlass was, if not the third most owned ship in the game, very close to it. And I mean, that says a lot for a manufacturer that was, you know, quote unquote, rejected out of hand. Now, of course, that's just flavor text to, you know, spice up the brochure. But I think a lot of people in the community kind of, you know, kind of smirked at Drake ships. And I remember back in the very early days of Arena Commander, you know, the Drake Cutlass was referred to as the poor man Super Hornet. And Drake ships didn't really gain a lot of traction with players, but over the years, the conveniences, the, the, the basic but efficient designs, I think really have shown through. I, in, in a weird way, I think that when you look at sh designers like Origin or Anvil or Aegis, oftentimes I think that CIG kind of gets lost in the weeds when they're kind of working on all the little details they're going oh you know is this the right shape language and you know oh does this you know does this wood paneling match with this chrome and maybe I need to rethink the entire decor when you're building a Drake ship you don't have time to think about those things and those things aren't included in the ship and I think that that in a weird way that benefits Drake ships and I think that's one of the strengths that Drake has kind of maintained and in a weird way I feel that you know the 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 latter um addition of the old paper thin meme from CIG was kind of CIG's kind of groping or reaching for a reason to kind of claw back from Drake because I think they realized a little too late that it was that that lack of focus on irrelevant detail led to better ships because all the focus went into the really important things. And I think that's where kind of Drake started to really build up momentum. In the early designs, yeah, they did look 
a little bit wonky, but I think that through the Cutlass version one and then the old school Cutlass, which is a ship that I still miss, to the new version of the Cutlass and later, a lot of Drake ships have matured in a lot of great ways. Um, the Herald, though, has been kind of a, a stick in the mud, but perhaps that's going to change. Whenever a new ship comes out in Star Citizen, you know, there's always like inf enthusiasm slash guilt. You know, you kind of look at it and you go, oh man, that's an amazing ship. But then you're thinking like, oh yeah, but the Bandu Merchman, oh yeah, but the Endeavor, you know, um, one of those ships going to get finished and it, it can get, you know, it, y you see the new designs and you're like, yeah, that's amazing. But at the same time, you kind of wish, you know, sometimes that they were built off of the existing platforms. I've certainly championed that in the past. And, you know, some people say, no, new ships. And other people are like, yeah, you know, I, I personally, from my perspective, you know, from the outside looking in, I feel that, you know, while certain ships do share assets within their family or within their tree, you know, whether it's Drake or whether it's Aegis or whatever, and they do they may share a whole bunch of assets that allows you to develop the subsequent ships that much faster i feel that we are kind of we are seriously top heavy on unique designs in star citizen um there are just too many ships that we just have no idea what the hell is going on with and you know even though Certainly some backers in CIG like to tout that, oh, we've got all these ships already in game, you know? Well, really, none of them are really fully and entirely in game. There's a whole bunch of work and a whole bunch of stuff that still needs to be done with a lot of those ships. The Caterpillar is evidence of that. I mean, the Caterpillar is nowhere near its full promised version of the ship with the detachable command pod and elevators down the side and off the front. A lot of those features have been kind of or the swappable ca or cargo pods. A lot of those features are yet to be delivered and are dependent on different things kind of coming together. And a lot of ships have that, you know? There's a lot of panels that you can't open that you're supposed to be able to open, storage areas that you can't access and things like that. So realistically, as much as some people would like to kind of point at all these ships that we're currently flying in Star Citizen and say, that ship's done, that ship's done, none of them are actually finished, right? And so I feel that once again, it's, it's time to kind of say, you know, yeah, like the Perseus is exciting, but at the same time, couldn't the Perseus have been a gun based variant of the Polaris? And would it still not have been an amazing ship? You know, maybe draw back on the size of the torpedoes and add bigger guns, something like that. And I think that there was, there's probably a lot of people in the community who once the enthusiasm has died down of like, oh my God, new ship, and they kind of settle into the weight that they would probably be like, eh, no, you know what? That probably, I think I would have preferred a variant of the Polaris over a, a unique Perseus design. I mean, th you know, there's a ship right there that um, obviously still requires a lot of work to kind of get it up to snuff. Um, So, yeah, I mean, when we talk about new ships and new concepts, if if one of those designs would be, you know, an E-War, like a larger E-War base ship, if it was based off of the Corsair, if it was a variant of the Corsair and maybe kind of had some, you know, had some hints of the original Herald, I would be all for it, not just because it's a great idea, but because I think it would be that much more efficient for CIG to kind of work in that way than to just say, oh no, and all new design. You know, we're going to share some of the fixtures and the chairs and the panels. But I think that, yeah, we do lose a few steps when we have to do that original ship architecture for every ship. And I, f I do feel we should make more use of variants off of the existing ships than we do. So... If that was the case and they made an E-War variant of the Corsair, it would it, automatically two thumbs up. It, I mean, there would have to be something spectacularly wrong there, like no weapon and armor storage, for me to really kind of be like, what are you doing? But yeah, E-War variant of the Corsair, 100% agree, 
100% agree. That's a great idea. watching so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in star citizen and squadron 42's development please follow please follow please follow us on our social media channels see you soon